We're doing our roundups of 2022. This time we're doing the best death metal records. There are some vicious and brutal albums on this list. Make sure you stick around for the whole thing. My first pick, Artificial Brain, self-titled, released June 3rd. June was a crazy month, not only for new music, especially towards the front of the month, but also because we were buried in our mid-year lists at the time. I actually missed this record at first, but heard about it through our good friend Icarus over at Metal Trenches and finally gave it a spin. Good fucking Lord. Is this album fantastic in the death metal department? Many people equate Artificial Brain as the new gold standard in modern death metal. And after visiting this self-titled record, I completely understand why. After I heard this album, I felt very similar as when I heard Gorgut's Obscura for the first time. This is a band that's pushing boundaries of the genre, making wacky sounds and brutality work together perfectly. without sacrificing production or making things sound too overly pristine and calculated. This is easily some of the best death metal of the year. That's why it's on this list, featuring unexpected twists and turns, meaty and huge riffs, and some of the lowest and brutal death metal growls in a modern death band and in the genre. It's a fantastic death metal album worthy of a wacky band name, and it deserves a spot on the best death metal records of 2022. Great pick, man. This is something that absolutely needs to be heard by anyone who considers himself a death metal fan. All right, no fucking surprise on this one, bro. Once I knew this band was dropping something this year, we were like, yeah, this is going to be exceptional. This band has been around for roughly two decades. A lot of you guys hadn't heard of them. Please spread the love about this band. It wasn't until 2012's The Inherited Repression that really put them on the map for me. That album is fucking insane with some of the craziest grooves and guitar riffs and drumming that like I've ever heard, bro. Divine Council continues Psychroptic's path of destruction with fucking inhuman guitar playing one of the most unique guitar tones in the game in a drummer that can keep up with the wizardry of these Australian brothers. This album sometimes feels as if you are standing before a divine council. There are orchestral and symphonic elements on here. really putting them in that symphonic direction. So if you love like septic flash and other stuff like that, you need to get on this one. Overall, this very well could be one of my favorite records from Psychroptic. If you're a tech death fan and you don't know who this band is, I'm assessing you a minor penalty. Put yourself in the boo box. <laughs> yeah, you can't miss this record. If if you somehow let this one slip through the cracks, fix your brain and go back and listen to yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> fix your artificial brain. Yes, please do. <laughs> Immolation, Acts of God, released February 18th. Easily one of the best death metal records of 2022. This record never fails, being extreme. Classic, brutal death metal to its core. There are so many great moments on this record for death metal fans, new and old. Mid to fast pacing, the guitar riffs are nothing crazy technical, but they are wonderfully unique, supported by blistering and beastly drums, guttural death growls, and just killer production overall. I will admit this record actually took me some time to fall in love with it. And to be honest, Acts of God now sits proudly as one of my favorite records of Immolation's catalog. The dissonant grooves are better than ever on this record with erratic and pummeling drum compositions. to support the searing riffs. I also love that killer album artwork from Eleron Cantor. Adds to the unholy worlds within. These New Yorkers still know how to fucking crush and Acts of God is a new favorite of mine next to Unholy Cult. I was gonna say, man, I haven't listened to this one in a little while, but there were a few songs that just blew me away. And it seems like if I give myself a little bit of space with it and go back to it, I'm probably gonna enjoy it more. I can see why it would take a little bit of time to grow on you. This is a great album. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just, it wanted, it's one of those albums like there's so many subtleties but once you pick up on them and you know when to anticipate them it starts to become earworms and you go you go back to it a lot all 
All right, it's tough to categorize this record, so this band has done the work for us. Death Gaze is the subgenre that Kardashev is spearheading, and it's got enough progressive death metal elements to fit very snugly into our list here today. Kardashev very confidently delivers their haunting take on death metal, grabbing bits from progressive gent, black, and post-rock genres. It's fucking heavy. and at times quite blistering and in your face. It's at those times that I think the album kind of shows their slight imperfections. It sort of bursts at the seams sonically when they go for these big epic climaxes where everybody's on 10, and there's some kind of blatant frequency bleed and digital distortion, kind of a eh part of the record. It really takes mega cojones to deliver something so touching and vulnerable, wrapped up in that eight string ultra sync patient oriented gent metal package because it's not that at all They could have easily fallen into the footfalls of some of the other death metal acts from Arizona, great bands like The Hemants or Job for a Cowboy. Instead, this band has course corrected themselves and is carving themselves a niche that just feels unmatched for all of their contemporaries. Yeah, this is a perfect pick, man. And I just, I love that a description of, you know, you're, you're heading full speed into a pillow. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much what the band feels like a lot of the time. Thank you, Bliss, for that <laughs> perfect metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> on death it's time to rise from the grave released april 22nd i love on death this band is easily one of the better modern death metal bands today for good reason filthy riffs great records and also a fucking devastating live show this is classic death metal worship in its finest form. Sure, it's also not another band that reinvents the wheel, but damn is it enjoyable when you want the stomp that comes with this record. It's funny, the album title reminds me of the old Sega Genesis game. Rise from your grave. Altered Beast. Yeah, it's so, <laughs> it's so good. I feel like this album could be a freaking soundtrack to playing that game. There's so many grimy riffs and the atmosphere is thick with the choking gases of rotting corpses that you just can't help but keep going back for another spin. Rise from the Grave straight up sounds like it's pulling limbs out of the best part of the carcass playbook at times, and I'm all for it. I love the production on this album too. It's claustrophobic in the best ways and the drums aren't clicky and annoying like a lot of other modern death metal records. The drums are dank and fizzy. Definitely do not miss this record if you somehow missed it in 2022. Very fun record. New York death metal has never sounded fucking better, man. This is one of the gems from that scene. I am happy to point out that this is a triple gold champion, an album that stood the test of this year. They were on our best of list. They were on our best of so far list. And now they're all the way here at the end of the year. And it's no, it's not because I don't want to listen to more music. And it's not that I don't want to copy and paste stuff, you know, from earlier reviews. It's not that at all. Look, there's no shortage of awesome fucking death metal records from this year that really range like, you know, a half hour or so. And this is is one of them. Between Corpse Grinder and Misery Index, these Portuguese newcomers have some pretty tight competition from fucking salty names in the industry. Congratulations, Nility. You've stood on your own throughout this year with a devastatingly good record. One of our favorites. Yeah, this is an up and coming band. They're underappreciated too. I feel like they got shadowed by some of the names that you dropped. So it's cool to see him at the end. Path, all that was promised, released March 4th, the day after my birthday. Happy birthday to me. This was one of my most anticipated albums of all of 2022. Of Rotten Ruin was a masterpiece, so I was chomping at the bit to get Half's new album, and all I can say is, bring on the gunk, boys. We still got the undisputed kings of Lovecraftian slime and grime-fueled death metal. 
It's rare you find a death metal release with killer consistency, not only in the songs themselves, but also in the song placement throughout the album. This record flows beautifully, weaving in and out of the dirty riffs and complex yet terrifying song structures that transport you to another sludge covered world. In terms of blackened death metal, it's tough to stand out compared to other bands. And I'm really happy to see Half have started to carve out an identity in the death metal landscape of bands that just sound like Sulphur Aeon over and over and over again. I thought it was tough to top their last release, but man, somehow they did it. Easily one of the best death metal records of 2020. This is probably my like number two of the year so far, man. It's practically perfect. It really is transcending what the whole genre is doing. So good. <laughs> In a bit of a surprise here, I was going through my extensive Excel document that keeps tracks of the hundreds of albums that I'm forced to listen to. <laughs> Look, Rat God, it was fine, all right? It didn't blow me the fuck away. Fear Sick, on the other hand, delivered something that was worthy on being on today's list. By far, it's not a perfect record. It's an echo of times past as they channel the best sounds from the 90s. It's no wonder when you look at that lineup either, dude. This is basically another super group level band that is looking to kind of dig up some of the fresh corpse that the 90s Floridian OSDM has left behind. If you look up our most recent Forge Master EP, mm, you might notice that we fucking love this subgenre. So yes, I'd say that subgenre is on the upswing as far as interest from musicians and audience members alike. This album is far superior to Rat God. If you miss fear sick for some reason stop what you're doing listen to it Autopsy, Morbidity, Triumphant, released September 30th. We've been spoiled with death metal this year, and the fact that one of the founders of the genre, notably Autopsy, have come out with easily their best goddamn record in years is a huge highlight of 2022. Autopsy do their brand of death metal one method, and that's disgusting, gory, and dripping with guts. There's even some welcome down tempo surprises on Morbidity Triumphant that I think no one was really expecting. And as a Death Doom fan, all I can say is more fucking please. I love the gross production, just adding to that infection factor of the sound of that repulsive ripping and cadaverous drumming. I love the sloppy and gross sound that Aut Autopsy chose on this record. And it sounds better than it ever has since their debut in 1988. This is a classic sounding Autopsy record that is going to have old school fans proud of these dead daddies, but also the new school fans welcome to the fold. The meathead riffs are meatier than ever. Grab your butcher knife and get to work because these legends still got it, man. I couldn't believe how cool this album was when I first listened to it. It's just so good. That's awesome. <laughs> Standing in a category very much on its own today is this record. This probably belongs in like a metalcore list, but we don't have one of those, so it's getting stuck in this list. Too bad. I mean, it, I kind of call them melodic death deathcore. Yeah. This is American metalcore, which at this point really is like, there's so much fucking overlap and inbreeding between melodic death and deathcore and that. Just fucking get over it, okay? Don't be offended. It's on the goddamn list. The thing that Venom Prison does best on this album is their ability to navigate the extreme melodic death elements with the hardcore and punk truly making this 2022's metalcore death core release. Beyond the confines of this subgenre, however, the diversity on this record is stunning. The clean vocals are a welcome addition. While the music isn't overtly technical, there are some really cool proggy elements that help them make their transitions and their bridges very interesting. Brutal in a different way, in a progressively social smash the patriarchy kind of way. It's a fucking awesome record. They made it on my best of melodic death metal list and it's totally deserving here. What do you think of these best of death metal 2022 picks drop yours down below in the comments go with the gods forge mates the morbidity will be triumphant